Hello guys, my name is Khan and actually in today's video we will be talking about reactive function. So what does it mean by reactive function in R? So actually all the functions that we are using like uh, if I go so um, before starting about uh, telling about you guys about the reactive function uh, I, I'm using this code file which I, I also have used the similar code file uh, for my previous videos if I execute it I already have a dashboard here that I will be using that I have made through R shiny if I control all and then control enter so this is the dashboard that I have created and I have user slider input some text input and then I'm outputting a bar graph and a data table so if I and this slider input is animated and played it the, it keeps on changing according to the data so i will just close it so as i was saying that what are the reactive function as this video is about reactive function so the reactive functions uh, so all the functions that we have used the function like render table or render plot or render text are all are kind of reactive functions so so whenever input variable change in R shiny so the it's so as we have as you guys know that in under our user interface we have defined some input variable so whenever the input variable change the R shiny look to update the output variable uh, by using these reactive functions so suppose if as you can see that I have created this slider input in this code and uh, this, uh, the uh, ID uh, the slider input is uh, capturing the ear variable oh, so when the ear variable get changed under the input uh, then R shiny will come and see that how this input will impact our output through using these reactive functions so as I said the render text uh, uh, render text or render plot or render table are all kind of reactive function so so suppose if i execute my code again control a and control enter so actually our uh, this slider inputs allow us to control our input variable so currently as you can see that my slider input is by default of 2005 that's why my output is showing accordingly to my slider input or my input variable and I am seeing only the 2005 data in my data table too and the graph is also bound related to that data I suppose if I move to this cursor to some 2007 so now my input get changed and because we have used reactive functions so R shiny have automatically updated my output according to my input change so that's why these functions are called reactive functions but you can also make your own uh, reactive functions too so one of the most important reason is of making your own reactive function is that it will uh, it will make your life easier and then it you, it will allow you to not to keep on writing the same things again and again so in this example, uh, in this code, if you, you know, I'm currently under my server where I am mentioning how I want to output my data result. If you see that where I'm rendering my plot, uh, you can see that first I imported the data, assign it to object data. Then I have done some manipulation in that data. I have taken the log, natural log of my employment rate variable and then I updated the same variable. Uh, and after that I have told uh, uh, told R shiny that which segment of the data I want to use and that data manipulation is based also on the input variable which is coming from the user interface and then I am plotting it but further if I go down where I am rendering the table I am again using the same commands again and because uh, I want to tell R shiny that uh, from where it gets the data and what kind of data manipulation I want, so I'm doing the same thing again. But you can make your you can 
remove this repetition by using uh, reactive function so now i will tell you guys that how you can create a reactive function so as i want to remove this repetition of these line and these line because both of them have the same code so therefore i will start my writing down my reactive function before line 33 so i will be here i will start writing my uh, reactive function now so so first thing is that what will be the name of my reactive function so i'll be saying i'm just saying data underscore r you can name it whatever you want and then i will assign a user assign this arrow or assign sign and then i will use the r shiny built-in function is which is reactive and after that i will start writing down my line so as i said that i want to create uh, I want to create a function. I, I want to create. Uh, I don't want to rewrite these lines again and again. So I will just copy these lines and paste it here. And in the end, because in the end, I have to tell R Shiny that what thing to return. So, so what will happen is that first under this reactive function whenever i will be calling in my code this data the r the r shiny will come import this data set and assign it to a object data and then it will do a natural log of my a variable within that data set and then assign update the same variable with the log values and after that it will create a subsection of my data based on the input here and after that i will be saying uh, return so the output of this reactive function will be based on my return command so i will be saying return data and this data object will be the last data update which we have made here so before going further i think it's a good idea if i able to show you guys uh, that what how the data looks like so if I just double click my data so the data is very simple so I have this is the same data set that I have also used in my previous videos so I have employment rate country and year so in my reactive function uh, first it will import the data then it will take the natural log of my employment rate and then take the subsection of the data based on the input year so as you can see my year variable starting from 2005-2018 so I will just close it so now I have created uh, my reactive function so now these rows are kind of redundant for me so I will uh, make I will comment them out by control shift C so I will just comment it out by adding uh, this number sign so now uh, R Shiny will treat them as a comment not as a code but the point is that how I will tell R that uh, go to in, in, in apply that reactive function now so that's very easy so now because my reactive function is returning me a data set so that's why I'm saying I will create an object with the same name as data you can change it accordingly but I am using the same object name again here that's why I'm uh, naming it same as data and then here is an important thing my reactive function name is data underscore r so in order to call my function I'll be saying data underscore r and, and as it is a function so I will be using in these parentheses without any argument so when so what happened is whenever I will write this thing whenever I will write down my reactive function it will realize that a, the R have to go back to this function my reactive function and have to do these data steps and then return the thing accordingly and once the final result will automatically assign here 
in the same way i don't need it under my render table now so first i made a change under my render flow and now under my render table i also don't need to write again these lines so i will just comment them out by using number sign and i will just copy the same lines again same thing that how i need to tell that uh, what kind of processes uh, i have to follow so now you can see that i have uh, by using just simply one line i have uh, removed these three line of code which i have repeated again and again so in this example i have told you guys this is just three lines but uh, in practical life when you will be working on a code you may have to do data manipulation which can go more than 100 lines or maybe even more than 200 lines so by using reactive function you can make your code more concise uh, and you don't need to repeat the same repetition again and again for each reactive function or for each render plot or each render table so you can make your life easier by just creating a simple reactive function so now let's see if i execute the code and now the execution will be based on my reactive function that i have created so not because that i have repeated the steps again and again when i am using uh, my functions like render plot and render table control a control enter as you can see that i have the same output result as before but now this output result is also based on a reactive function which allows me to not to repeat the code again and again so i'll close it down so in this example i have returning a data set but uh, the reactive function can return you a vector can you return you a scalar uh, or can return you a matrix so just as an example suppose if in this example i just want to return not the whole data object i just want to return a part of a data object you can also do that probably i will get an error because my plot is based on uh, all the variables of my data set but here i'm saying just return me the year variable which is in my uh, in my data set so i'm just going to show you an example that it's not necessary that you have to return a data set your return object or your final object final output of your reactive function can be anything can be a scalar can be a vector can be a matrix can be a data set so now if i execute this as i told you that my graph i have i got an error for my graph but for my uh, data table i didn't get an error because data table can uh, output a vector or a segment of the, the data set so, so in this exam in this video we have gone through quickly about the reactive function and how you can use the reactive function to make your code more concise and it will allow you to not repeat the same steps again and again uh, under your server functionality while you mentioning it so thank you for watching the video.